Hello everyone, welcome to Mind Blowing Health and Wellness with Violet, Patch Hat Edition. I'm Violet. And I'm Pat. We make these videos because Patrick has a news feed where he finds interesting articles, sometimes interesting because the information is really good, sometimes questionable. What are we talking about today, Patrick? This week we're talking about muscles. Cool. Okay. <laughs> so it's uh, uh, an article that like came in my feed that uh, piqued my curiosity uh, from Fitness Vault, and it's uh, an article like uh, titled "All About the Bubble Gut: Why Pro Bodybuilders Get It." To me, it was clear like the like I I, I didn't even like have to read like the article and had a clue what's what what, what was happening. We kind of are going to discuss their reason for like uh, they're, they're mentioning for the bubble gut in pro bodybuilders. And actually, I, I saw uh, one article just like a little earlier today. This uh, like the seven times Mr. Olympia won actually a Mr. Olympia title with a bubble gut. And when you say bubble gut, you're talking about okay. like so, almost like a bare belly. So so bubble gut, what it is actually, uh, you see all those muscular guys. They have they have a super lean body mass, but yeah, they have a protuberant tummy. Like they really look almost like look like they're pregnant. <laughs> so right away to me, what we're talking about is visceral fat. And right away, the first thing that it makes me think is either you are drinking heavily or eating a lot of fruits, high, high carbohydrate high fruits. Carbs. Yeah. The reason I'm going there is because they you're, they're really healthy people. Yeah. And so, so what would cause you to have that bubble gut the most mm. and something that would be considered healthy yeah. fruit? So yeah. this is my guess as I'm listening to you talk, but I'm going to wait to hear what else you have well, to say. Dr. Thomas O'Connor says that the, gut, that the gut is not produced by steroid use. So rather it's from the excess consumption of foods, like they talk foods, and various that, drugs. Sorry, people, fruits? F -R -E no, foods, foods. Sorry, oh, foods. foods. F -O -O -D -S. Yeah, F -O -D -S. So just eating regular food. Yeah, right, regular food, yeah, at once. And various drugs people use for a competitive advantage. But not steroids. Not, ster not steroids. Okay. So. A lot of articles assume are uh, the use of human growth hormones. O'Connor, whose experience states that people who use insulin and human and human growth hormone to build their muscles are at an elevated risk of developing the bubble gut. So right now, I see okay the the growth hormone. I'm not sure why, but insulin we all know like the, the damage of in, like insulin resistance. O'Connor also says that bodybuilders are using insulin, insulin these days to increase their bulk. Also, some people are consuming as many as 10,000 calories and 1,800 grams of carbs in a day. So all of a sudden, like having maybe an insulin supplement <laughs> makes sense to put away all those, those carbs. How much carbs? Uh, 1,800 grams. Of carbs? Of carbs. 1,800 yeah. grams. grams. 10,000 calories, 1,800 grams in, uh, of, of carbs. carbs. So, so first of all, like, it doesn't make sense. Yeah? That's a lot of carbs. That's a lot of carbs. Like that's a lot of carbs. So you kind of question now, well, now we understand the insulin, hmm. but the question is why are they eating that many carbs? Yeah. Does it say no, why no, no, that no. many carbs? Like in, in that little research I did, I, I also like fell on uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger video from like, he was talking about like his day, like his days when he was like uh, Mr. Universe and he was actually uh, talking about what he was eating like in a day and it was like all but carbs so basically they were having a lot of proteins but it was like mostly steak and eggs steak and eggs steak and eggs was something that seems like to come back a lot like in the diet like we know other people that are keto and are bodybuilding like the first like idea that came to my mind was keto savage if you look at Keto Savage, the guy doesn't have a bubble gut, and we and and we talked, I think, before about him where he did like a six, seven thousand calories challenge a day, mostly from fat. There was no carb. He was like still sticking to his uh, couple grams uh, a day, uh, and, and, and no bubble gut. Like the guy has a t like teeny tiny stomach, or almost like Arnold in the in the seventies. So I think it's just a change in maybe the diet where I think. We, we, but we, what I'm trying to figure out is the thou the, the, the 1800 grams of carbs is towards what end? The, are they saying that that is that for that? Okay, first of all, carbohydrates give us energy. Mm -hmm. And my question is 1800 grams of carbs worth of energy to do one day of working yeah. out? Like you're doing this every day. Okay. Where my mind is going is 
we can only store one day's worth of carbohydrates for usage in the like in your muscles the rest mm -hmm. of it gets stored as fat but then of course they're working out super hard mm -hmm. so like the part of me is just trying to figure out like so let's say they need the 10,000 calories per day like to to maintain their bodies be their 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 muscular mass okay we often hear that like carbs are the easiest accessible available and digestible source of energy yes if you eat a carbohydrate heavy meal some of those carbohydrates will be used right away but the reason that some of those carbohydrates are used right away is your body is trying to get rid of them mm -hmm. so it uses some it stores some so like part of me is trying to figure out like just yeah maybe you're right maybe that their body so maybe because of all the muscle they have their body is using that much energy in a day like it's just using mm -hmm. a lot of energy in a day but my my i guess my question still is they're, they're not not eating fat, or are they? From the article, they uh, kind of imply that there is a, uh, a focus on carbs as the preferred source of energy. So okay. All that said, you probably need that insulin to get rid of those 1,800, uh, 18, yeah, 1800 uh, grams of carbs per day. No, I absolutely believe they'll need the insulin to Otherwise get rid of it. Die. But what I'm, I'm still struggling yeah, to understand. But what I'm still struggling to understand is, so they eat this carbohydrate heavy meal. Okay, their body burns a lot of energy, clearly. They're, they're super muscular mm -hmm. people. But then like, they are noticing, so they're doctors. I'm talking about the doctors now, because like, let's say the individual doesn't know. Your doctor is noticing that you are actually acquiring fat around your organs mm -hmm. Isn't there a conversation that you think would happen between the doctor and this person to be like, you realize, uh, but maybe they know, maybe they've been told that mm -hmm. this is going to harm their health and they're just doing it because they need to be Mr. He, top of the top of the. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, like at home, I have a scale that uh, gives me my relative. Well, we, we already, I think, talk, covered that like before, like my visceral fat. Isn't there a test, like an easy test that it could do to actually measure the fat around their organs? Like an easy well, you'd if I think if you did like some kind of scan, you would see. But the, that's but that's part of the thing that's so interesting to me is that we already know that when you have fat around your midsection and that it's hard, that's not subcutaneous. Yeah. Right. We know that subcutaneous fat yeah. is like soft and mushy. Yeah. Right. And those guys like don't have uh, like uh, we see from the picture. Those guys have zero sub sub subcutaneous. Subcutaneous. Subcutaneous fat. Like they're like they're ripped. So so all the fat are probably around their organs. That's but you see, that's and what makes it even more dangerous. Yeah. Because they have exactly the fat that's gonna cause you to have health issues. But their doctors mm. have to know like that's the part where I'm kind of confused. Just like, but again, you know what? And I've said this a bunch of times. Like the same way that you can't get somebody to stop smoking you can't get somebody to stop drinking you can't get somebody to stop eating in a way that's harmful to their health until they decide that is that they're going to stop doing it mm -hmm. so i'm making the assumption that the doctors must be telling them that this is not healthy mm -hmm. yeah but they're doing it anyways so so what i was happy like though that is that i found uh, i did find like uh, another article because i was like trying to find sources on how to reverse it or, or how to fix it and most of the article were were good were right the bubble gut like the real term is palimboism so that Sorry. i discovered like the real term the real scientific term for the bubble gut is palimboism that article like mentioned the only way to reverse it is to stop using human growth hormone that i wasn't sure like why human growth hormone yeah but why like we if you really you want to increase your you, let's say your gym buff you want to go to the gym and you want to take advantage of a human the, the hgh What's the best way to, to do yeah, that? Yeah, well, you just you don't eat before you go to the gym. You, you don't like eat if, you, if you're fasting. When <laughs> yeah. you're fasting, you have more human growth hormone. So, but but they're saying that the human growth hormone is what's causing. Here, okay. But it's getting more interesting. Like, and the next paragraph is how to prevent it. So taper off HGH and insulin. So, so the insulin, of course, definitely stop. But again, like if you eat ten thousand calories a day and eight hundred grams of carbs, like 
maybe uh, cutting off on insulin, 1800 grams of carbs, um, cutting off on insulin probably would put you at risk. Uh, You're already at risk. You're already at risk indeed. Like yeah. honestly, like they're injecting insulin to put away carbohydrates that they shouldn't be eating. They're mm -hmm. already at risk. Yeah. The thing is, if you're taking insulin, you're you're behaving like a diabetic. Mm -hmm. Which yeah. now I'm wondering, are you not diabetic at that point? If at you're taking you insulin, are. so this is a big question mark in my mind. Yeah. If I'm taking insulin, I'm behaving like a diabetic, but does that actually put my body in the position of being diabetic? Because mm -hmm. all the repercussions of injecting insulin are going to be there yeah. tip number two intermittent fasting i was happy to see like in in an article like in a health article actually intermittent fasting can help you here prevent but i'm pretty sure it can help you cure your bubble gut too but, like, but what's interesting about this is that if you're intermittent fasting you don't need to take human growth hormone you just need to work out before you eat hmm. so it kind of solves two of the problems right yeah. there yeah. Tip number three: cut down on uh, cut down on carbs. So that's absolutely the one that's obvious to us, and and like it was to me in the first place when I read the first article, and like the other one: time your carb load. So if you're carb loading, make sure you load 24 hours before you need it to look your best. This way, you can help clean out your stomach while still retaining the glycogen boosted muscle mass. So see that part I have a hard time with because how can you glycogen boost? your body replaces the glycogen in your muscles regardless. Like if you're not at that moment engaged in lifting heavy things or doing like some kind of exercise, your body's replacing it, right? It doesn't, le it doesn't wait until you need to use it to replace it. So I'm, I'm still a bit confused of what that means that you're gonna take advantage of the glycogen yeah. boosted like. Like if you're gly like they imply that your glycogen is actually what makes your muscle visible and more like uh, yes. pumped. But they also imply mm -hmm. that it's only there for a short period of time, yeah. which is something I don't understand, con considering what I understand of how this works. Yeah. If there's somebody out there who knows another piece of information that can share on yeah. that one, I'd be I'm very interested in here. But, yeah. but it's like <clears throat> it's interesting because I have like a colleague at work. I have uh, I often have that conversation with him, and he can he cannot actually fig like he cannot figure in his head going to the gym like fasted like okay. he really feels like he needs carbs throughout the day before he goes to the gym and you can see the guy is large he's like not like he doesn't have a tummy but like he's wondering why he can get his uh, body fat low enough why he can get more cut why he can get like and, and i was trying to, <laughs> to explain to him like just cut the carbs like it's probably just like the carbs that push your system to store like your excess in fat but and that's why you can't like but can we also like this is where we get confused like we're talking about fat but carbohydrates also cause you to retain water hmm. right so it's like you know like at the same time it's like even it's interesting to me how when you read articles about keto the first thing they're going to throw at you is that you didn't really lose weight you just lost water hmm. but then you have these people going around and they're trying to be cut but they're downing the carbs and they don't understand that you're not going to look cut if you're bloated mm. with water, right? So it's another yeah. thing that I, I feel like they, that we we only remember that carbohydrates cause us to retain water when you've lost weight from not eating them, not when you're eating them all the time and you're retaining it. Mm. Like to me, uh, the reason for the bubble gut was like obvious. I, I, I think that they didn't like, mention the one thing that's probably even more obvious, which is that these athletes are probably eating lots of fruit. That leads me to the second part of the chat we're having with another article that I found interesting and it was titled the best seven, the seven best carbs to build muscle. Okay. Like again, if carbs are essential to build muscle, like to me, it's I'm already more, pausing you right there yeah. because carbs don't build muscle. Oh, Protein can. builds muscle. Yeah. <laughs> carbs gives so. you energy. So, I mean, yes, do I need energy to lift the weights to, but I mean like, but honestly, it's a fuel source. So that's a question mark for me again. But okay. So, do you want to know what the best, like the seven best carbs are? <laughs> I'm scared, but okay. <laughs> yeah, you, you should be. <laughs> because no fruits are not there. No fruits are not there. Uh, oh, first there's one. There's no fruits? Okay. No, there's no fruits. Breakfast. Those are, those are fruits. Oh, yeah. But like, it's breakfast cereal, <laughs> though. So, breakfast cereal with at least two grams of fiber uh, gives you about 60 grams. Uh, and the milk, uh, yeah, the, the carb content to about 60 grams. And the protein to 30 grams with milk. 
So like right, at, right off the bat, you start your day with two times your carb <laughs> allowance. Second one, bagels. I was surprised with this one. Like so basically bagels. so far we've had grains, grains. and grains. And grains. Yeah. Why do you, do you I think there's going to be a theme of grains on this on this list. Uh, I think so. Um yeah, third one, bran muffins. Grains? So there's a little bit of fiber in bran muffins, but like it's still high carb and and muffin problem with muffin too is like they're probably high in fat too because you need a lot of fat to make a muffin. If I'm not mistaken, I have made muffin in such a long time. Okay, number 4 comes the rice cereal. So again, rice 30 grams of protein and 90 grams of carbs in one serving. They don't tell you how much fat's in any of these things. No, no, enough. because like, yeah, no, because it's the, the best carbs to build muscle. Okay. Anyway. The but best why are they talking about the protein content? You should content, rename then. the best carbs to build your tip. <laughs> <laughs> the best carbs to build your bubble gut. <laughs> uh, mashed potatoes comes at number five. This one is also tricky because it's a mix of fat and carbs. So, so, um, uh, high, gly high glycemic uh, vegetables with like butter, and we know that those usually don't don't go well together. The fat and the um, oh, and okay. uh, the sugar. Uh, number six, white rice with raisins. So you this a fruit? This a fruit? Yeah, you're right. Like there's one fruit. So two cups of white rice mixed with a handful of raisins provide a hundred fifty. Can I just point out of carbs in the picture? Because they said a handful of raisins, and when you're looking at this picture, that's not a there's, handful. Yeah. That's like two cups of rice with like a cup of a raisins. Cup of raisin, yeah. But he has big hands, the dude. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway. Um, uh, to, 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 yeah, depending on your hand size, I guess you can probably ask your girlfriend to put the raisin in her rice. <laughs> to have a little bit less. <laughs> um, and number seven, of course, I, w I was surprised to see it at number seven, but pasta. So okay. they're talking about pasta. So, so I want to... Just, a little, just a, let me let me like, go with that. So if you had, for example, because all those foods you probably can have in a day, easily if you if you have three meals a day and a couple snacks. So basically, you have your bagel at forty at fifty gram, your little muffin for the snacks at uh, probably another forty fifty. They don't say here. Uh, the rice ninety grams, the past the the rice with the raisins one hundred fifteen, and the pasta, you have another ninety grams. How much was the potatoes? Uh, the potatoes, uh, I, I think I skipped because uh, 42 grams of carbs per cup. So a cup is not super big either. So so just adding up all those those food, you're easily at probably 350, 400 grams of carbs per day. And you're wondering why like you can get lean and you get a bubble gut after that. But I, it's interesting to me because they didn't reach 1800s because you kind of wonder how m what are these people eating that are getting to 1800. Oh. That's first of all. But again, they probably are doing shakes and all these other things as yeah. well. Uh, but what I will also say is, one of the things I remember when we were talking about The Biggest Loser was the fact that when when the people from The Biggest Loser are exercise, uh, exercising the way that they were, they were exercising as if it was their job. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that I want to point out is that the fact that these people are ripped everywhere except except their gut goes back to that piece of information. They're exercising as work. This is what they do. So I also want to point out for the regular guy, like the guy at your work, mm -hmm. that's not his job. So he can't get ripped like these guys because he can't exercise the amount that they're working out. Like he's not going and spending the entire day at the gym like they are, yeah. Yeah. right? And so I think that's the other piece of the puzzle that people need to think about when you're reading these articles and oh how to get billed and repped and whatever like grain of salt right like you're not able to do what these guys are actually doing to to use all that energy that they're actually eating so when they're in encouraging mm -hmm. you to eat cereal and bagels and all these high carb foods so we got to 300 grams adding that up you need to keep in mind that's 300 grams and then you're sitting at a desk probably or mm. you know driving a vehicle probably or like you're not you're not lifting 400 pounds every every day like they are i feel like the second half of this patch hat could be dangerous for a lot of people mm. if you try to accomplish what these people are accomplishing because you don't have the luxury of working out for a living even if you were going to the gym every day and I try to put my colleague and it doesn't work. <laughs> but, 
unfortunately. Like, sure. just like stick to a low carb diet. I think it would be probably better to stick with the low carb, with like the cleanest carbs you can find. Uh, not probably like the white rice and I don't know if like we don't we we don't believe in clean carbs, but probably it would be best to keep like uh, under a certain, like your 100, 125 grams of carbs per day and, uh, and, have, and have healthy fats and good protein sources. Yeah, in terms of like people who probably could manage to do a low carb lifestyle, it probably are these guys, mm. but they're not doing anywhere near low carb at 1800 no. grams of carbs per day. Like mm. that's, that's, no, of course, I'm talking more about like scary the, the numbers. Colleague at, the colleague at work that do, even though he, if he goes like every day, he spend the 90 minutes at the gym, he still have like a higher energy expenditure. Mm -hmm, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. But I, I, the other piece of this puzzle though is that if you're looking at these the the people in these in this article, like if they were doing 125, they wouldn't have the bubble gut probably, right? Although fructose though, I mean, I still yeah. think that. That the fructose could be a problem but like to that extent i have mm. i'm not sure i'm not sure so but again like the uh, uh, like related to fructose in the second article that is more like targeted to, to everybody um it's mostly grains instead of like fructose so is that a plus is that a like are grains actually better for your system than fruits in terms of your liver yes i think mm. i think your your liver manages them better so yes, I think that might be a yes, but mm -hmm. I, I'm not 100 percent sure. It depends on how much fructose is in what, right? So I know obviously fruit, there's a lot of fructose, but there are some vegetables that still have a, a, a good amount of fructose in them. Mm -hmm. So this is where people need also to be careful. Mm -hmm. So maybe a little challenge for our viewers. If some of you guys, girls that go to the gym, uh, try to go fasted like I've, I've tried it a couple of times like a while ago we were doing a longer fast uh, I think a four or five days I think I went to the gym after my third day my second day my third day I didn't die it was like a little bit um, weird at first but once you get going it's fine like I think it's more like psychological <laughs> it's in your head more than uh, like in your body because you can do it I was in a I was able to push the same amount of weight I was able to do my warm-up the same the same way I will say that for myself, almost every activity that I do is fasted because mm. I eat one day, meal a day. My meal is the supper meal. So every other thing that I'm doing, whenever we, whenever we go doing any activities, and when I was working out, because I do have a gym in my basement for those times when we can't be outside. And so when I was doing that, um, I was doing it fasted. Mm. When I did longer fasts, I didn't stop working out because I was doing a longer fast. So I agree with you. I think that most people eat before they go to the gym because they've been told you're supposed to eat before you go to the gym, not because you actually needed to eat or not even sometimes because you were actually hungry because you were planning, you plan it and you plan your gym around when you're going to eat. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's a, a very interesting idea. And I think that I do agree. Let's see. I want everybody to tell us in the comments do a fasted workout and let us know was it more tiring than when you didn't do a fasted workout if so like be specific what happened what was your observation of working out fasted versus working out um after you've eaten i'm, mm -hmm. I'm actually curious to know the answer to that if you found this video helpful there are amazon links patreon links and now teespring links in the description below we also have more videos that you guys can check out youtube thinks you would like this one and this is our last video I want to thank you for watching Mind Blowing Health and Wellness with Violet. Can't wait to talk to you guys again next week. See you next week.